All right, here I have the function, the absolute value of x over x graphed. And let's just, let's just do a little bit of analysis and make sure we understand why f of x equals the absolute value of x over x looks like that. So when x is greater than 0, well, the absolute value of a, of a positive number is just the positive number. So the absolute value goes away. So this just becomes x over x, which is equal to 1. So it doesn't matter what x is going to be, f of x will just equal 1, as long as x is greater than 0. So that, that's this right here. If x is less than 0, well then the absolute value will return a positive x, or the positive value of whatever x is going to be, and the denominator will be negative. And a positive x over a negative x is going to end up being negative 1. Oops, less than zero. So let's just do a quick example of, of that case. So let's say we were looking at uh, x is negative 10. We'd get the absolute value of negative 10 over negative 10, which is equal to positive 10 over negative 10, which of course is equal to negative 1. And you can see that it doesn't matter if you plug in negative 10 or negative 3 or negative pi. Any negative number, this is, this is how it's going to turn out. The positive of the number over the negative of the number will just be negative 1. Okay, so we did just some quick analysis and we realized that you know, this is what this function looks like. Now, as x squeeze, squeezes in on 0, that's what we're concerned about. As x squeezes in on 0, what do the heights squeeze in on? Let me do that in a different color. If x squeezes in on 0, what do the heights squeeze in on? Well, you can see that they, they really they don't agree on a height to squeeze on, um, or, or to squeeze in on. There's not one height. Here, this would be negative 1, if we were just looking as x comes from 0 from the left side, or from numbers less than 1. The heights would, would, be, would be all be negative 1. Up here, they would all be positive 1. So since they, they don't agree between left and right, then this function doesn't exist, or this limit doesn't exist. Let me show you that with a table, because we're we're, we've gotten some practice with, with making tables. So let me, let me show you that. All right, so we're trying to figure out what happens as, as x squeezes in on zero. So from the left side, let's pick point, uh, or sorry, negative point oh one, negative point oh oh one, negative point oh 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 one, and then from the right side, let's pick, you know, point, positive point oh one, positive point oh oh one, positive point zero 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 one. So these numbers are, the, the positive numbers from the right side, we're squeezing in on zero, and from negative, from the left side of zero, we're squeezing in on zero. What happens to f of x? Well, we know that these are all negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. No matter what the x value is, we just get negative 1 as long as x is negative. For positive numbers, we just get positive 1 as long as x is positive. So when we look at what happens, as x squeezes in on 0, what does f of x squeeze in on? Well, we have 1 and negative 1. So there's, no, there's not one number that f of x squeezes in on. It actually it's squeezing in on two different numbers. So when that happens, we say this limit does not exist. We write it as dne. It does not exist. So this limit, it's, it's basically, you can think of it almost as, as like undefined. There's no answer for this limit. The limit just doesn't exist. Because f of x isn't getting closer to one specific number. Okay, and in the next video we'll look at another example of why a limit might not exist. But this is one reason. If f of x is, is as we get closer to the number, uh, in our case it was 0, if we get closer to 0 and f of x doesn't get closer to one only one number, then the limit doesn't exist. See you in the next video.